name is Anthony. I'm a registered pharmacist in uh, New York State and on staff here at the Burp Rehab Hospital. And today I will be presenting proper medication use in COPD. What causes COPD? Cigarette, pipe, cigar, other types of tobacco smoke are the number one cause of COPD. Air pollution, repeated infection, such as pneumonia and bronchitis. Common day-to-day -day symptoms of COPD include cough, thick, sticky mucus, difficult or labored breathing, shortness of breath, wheezing, and chest tightness. So what are the goals of treatment? Prevent disease progression, improve quality of life, relieve symptoms, improve exercise tolerance, reduce mortality, prevent complications and future attacks, and treat the complications of the attacks. So we'll talk a little bit about the types of treatments that we have available to us for COPD. Smoking cessation is the number one treatment for COPD, protecting from airborne irritants, exercise often, eat healthy, and stress management. Oxygen therapy. Some, some studies have shown an increase in survival rates in patients who use oxygen more than 15 hours a day. Moreover, according to the American Lung Association, supplemental oxygen improves sleep, mood, mental alertness, and stamina, and allows individuals to carry out normal everyday functions. Medication usage. First category we'll talk about are short-acting bronchodilators. Included in that category are Atrovent, Albuterol, and Combivent. Albuterol is the direct-acting bronchodilator that should be used as your rescue inhaler. The second category are long-acting bronchodilators. These dilators have a longer onset of action and a long duration of action, so you use less of it throughout the day. They include Salmeterol, which is found in Advair, Formeterol, which is found in Simbacort, and Aframeterol, which is found in Brovana. Aframeterol is a unique medication because it has the quickest onset and the longest duration of action of the category of long-acting bronchodilators. The last in this category is Spireva. Spireva is a long-acting anticholinergic bronchodilator that works via the uh, brain stem to stimulate bronchodilation. The third category is inhaled corticosteroids. Fluticasone is a long-acting corticosteroid found in Flovent and in combination in Advair. Mometasone is found in Asmonex and Budesonide is found in Simbacort and in Pulmacort and Pulmacord is available as a nebulizer and as an inhaler. With corticosteroids, either short-acting or long-acting, you should make sure to rinse the oral cavity to avoid thrush, which is a fungal infection that occurs on the tongue, and to prevent other gum diseases. The fourth category is oral corticosteroids, and there is only one drug to talk about in this category, and that's prednisone. Prednisone's reasons for use includes uh, exacerbation of uh, upper respiratory tract infections that may occur, and they use it conjunctively with antibiotic usage. Some of the side effects to look out for with prednisone is stomach ulcer, hematoma, osteoporosis, cataracts, hair loss, water retention, water retention can thus lead to high blood pressure and heart failure. If the heart failure is left untreated, it can lead to pulmonary hypertension, and that is a squeezing of the blood through the vessels of the lung, uh, and that would prevent oxygenated blood from getting to the heart and the rest of the body. Another major side effect of prednisone is diabetes. This is caused by desensitizing of the pancreas and the red blood cells, 
it prevents the red blood cells from absorbing excess glucose and it desensitizes the pancreas from re releasing insulin. So thus, you have a high blood sugar level. It can be reversed over time once prednisone is eliminated from treatment. Remember to use calcium and vitamin D since prednisone causes osteoporosis. So let's talk about proper steps for using your metadose inhaler. This is a metadose inhaler. So you would remove the cap and the canister and shake the canister well. Exhale as thoroughly as possible. And place the mouthpiece between the teeth and the seal of your and seal your lips around it. As you start to breathe in, slowly press down on the canister one time. And keep breathing in slowly and deeply for about five to seven seconds. Hold your breath for at least 10 seconds. If two inhalations need to be taken, you need to repeat the steps that we just spoke about, waiting about one minute between puffs. When you're finished, Replace the cap on the metadose inhaler. And if you're using a corticosteroid metadose inhaler, you should use a valve holding chamber. Another way to deliver medication is through a spacer. And the proper steps for using the spacer would be to first remove the cap from the metadose inhaler and insert it into the rubber tubing at the end of the aero chamber. Breathe out completely and place the mouthpiece between your teeth and seal your lips around it. You press the canister once and then breathe slowly and completely through the mouthpiece of the aero chamber until you hear a horn-like sound. And this means you have inhaled the amount of medication that's in the canister. Hold your breath for about 10 seconds and repeat the steps above for each puff. Replace the cap on the aero chamber when you're done and the cap on the metadose inhaler when you're done. And if you're using a corticosteroid, rinse and gargle with water or mouthwash after each use. Caring for your metadose inhaler. Some metadose inhalers need to be cleaned on a daily basis. You should remove the canister from the mouthpiece and rinse the mouthpiece with warm water. At least once a week, and this will prevent the holes in the mouthpiece from clogging. Don't dry with a towel, but let it air dry and shake it out as best you can before putting the canister back in the mouthpiece. For the aero chamber, you can remove the rubber ring at the end of the mouthpiece, at the end of the canister, and soak the spacer in warm water with a mild detergent. Carefully clean and rinse the inside of the aero chamber and let it air dry, either by shaking or leaving it in a, uh, a rack. Do not store the aero chamber in a plastic bag. For dry powder inhalation, such as Advair or even Spiriva, with Spiriva you have to insert a capsule into the mouthpiece uh, and you'll hear a, a cracking sound. That's the opening of the capsule. You would breathe in normally until you hear a whistling sound. For Advair, the device has a counter which you would dial. It will register the next dose and you will breathe it in normally for about 10 seconds. Another delivery system is the nebulizer. This allows the individual to use a face mask or a mouthpiece and allows them to breathe in their medication at their own pace. It allows the individual to stop in the middle of a treatment in order to take a break. Direct, it's a direct medication delivery system because it delivers the medication directly into the lung uh, at a faster rate. So in conclusion, good hydration is very important for treatment of COPD. Water becomes 
a great necessity because it acts as, an, as a uh, natural expectorant to help loosen up congestion in the lung and help you to expectorate the congestion. It actually keeps the oral cavity clean, uh, so it promotes good oral hygiene. And patients should avoid caffeine-containing products such as coffee, tea, chocolate, soda. Um, this is because it can cause a synergistic side effect with some of their medications that they're, you're, that they're using. Antibiotic usage. Uh, individuals can experience exacerbation of their COPD because of an upper respiratory tract infection. These can be treated effectively with oral medications. Please finish your regimen. If it's a seven or ten day regimen, that regimen should be completed. It's a lot harder to treat secondary infection than it is the primary infection. Secondary infection is usually treated with IV antibiotics. Vitamins. Uh, vitamins such as uh, a good multivitamin uh, is uh, necessary for um, uh, proper nutrition. Check with your physician if he requires you to use extra iron and seek advice from a pharmacist if you have any questions about your vitamins. Food and drug interactions can occur leading to increases in blood pressure, sweating, and insomnia. For a list of objectives, documents, and resources, you can go to the Global Initiative for Chronic Obstructive Lung Disease at www.goldcopd.org. That's G -O -L -D -C -O -P -D .org.